Next up, we have Ian Daly, uh, Director at Plan B Disaster Recovery. Good, good afternoon. Hi. Ian. Hi. How are nice you? you? Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Plan B. What about Plan C and D? <laughs> we you only need Plan or B. Plan A. We've got it all covered. So tell us a bit about Plan B. Uh, we're a fully managed disaster recovery service. Um, we have been around for about 10 years. We're reasonably small in terms of, uh, but we look after and generally medium to enterprise clients. Um, what, th what makes us unique is effectively we uh, recreate and test the whole infrastructure to the application layer on our recovery platform every night to wow. make sure that if somebody ever needs it, we actually have a running infrastructure and set of systems that are user ready within the period it takes to boot up, which so that is generally an hour or so. So I would host my disaster recovery infrastructure with you, is that right? Or would yes, I, would you, you run your production systems yeah. as you want, and we provide the DR if those production systems become unavailable, whether they are you know, a complete you know, tsunami or fire, or just generally speaking, a human error or physical uh, a problem where we can give you a partial recovery or just your data back. For instance, if you had a problem with CryptoLocker or a ransomware, generally speaking, we have an unblemished version that we can give you back e that even, you know, you tend to not bring your, um, keep your backups up to date. It's where we're basically the sort of uh, get out of fr free jail card when everything else has failed. Have you ever had a disaster recovery plan, Anthony, or needed one? I have never um, needed one. I hope I never need one. No makeup in the bag or anything? Ah, oh, that kind of disaster. Yeah. <laughs> I've had hair disasters before. Yeah. I don't know if you could help with that as well. I don't know. Perhaps you could help us with that. <laughs> uh, I always have a hair disaster, but I, I just have difficulty making the decision. Here, Should I go all the way or not? all the way down here every morning. <laughs> but, uh, it's looking very beautiful today. Uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I... I, I yeah, funny enough, a disaster recovery background. Uh-huh. Yeah. You have a background in everything. Yeah, yeah. I've lived a lot. Traveled yeah, we, a lot. we already established that he's from prehistoric times. Hence so dinosaur. Veritable dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> I used to write disaster recovery plans and procedures. Did you? Impact analysis and, and all sorts in my past. In fact, in one, one particular guise, I was also head of compliance, but anyway, it's not about me. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's always about me, really. But, um, however, Disaster recovery with public cloud and all of this environments now, do you think people take it seriously? Or do they think that's an automatic option? If I'm hosting in a cloud environment, they automatically think that it's fully redundant and they have disaster recovery? It is assumed that it is. Yeah. Cloud is basically your data on someone else's computer. So you give away that control. Um, there are fundamentals for trying to you know, make it resilient, but at the end of the day, it's your responsibility, and you have to take the risk assessment, whether you are all in on Azure or AWS, or you want to take some of that stuff off. Um, there's been a recent disaster with SSP, who are a, a SaaS provider. They had a problem. It's a big cloud. It's their own infrastructure. Um, they had a problem, and there were about 400 uh, insurance agents who were, could not do anything for a week, and then it failed again after they got it coming back some functionality. And there's nothing you can do, particularly with SaaS environments. Um, so you do pays your money, it takes your choice, um, but you know there are some real benefits to some of the cloud. It's, it can be a lot cheaper. Um, and for disaster recovery, um, you know it does mean you can store data a lot, lot, you know, um, with with significant savings. Um, but you have to know what you've bought. Um, these cloud providers with online tools are a little bit like evil genies. They yeah. give you precisely what you wished for. Oh, really? And because it's so easy, quite often it's not the technical team who specify what is wished for. So you basically take a slimmed down version with none of the incumbents that an IT department may uh, insist on to make something safe and secure. And because you have this immediate functionality, you think it's wonderful. And then you only have a problem, and then you go, ah, maybe I should have done that. Like Deloitte's, for instance. Well, everyone does the deeds of knee jerk <laughs> after they have an accident. They do. Yeah. Or a disaster, they do. you know. And there's a, I think there's always a distinction. Of, certainly when we talk about disaster recovery, um, 
they put it in the same bag as you like as business continuity. The two are separate. So yeah. a business continuity plan, if you like, is a plan of your the, the continuous uninterrupted usage of your business and your process. With disaster recovery, it's like when it all goes horribly wrong. Yeah. And then how do I get it all back up and running? You know, and the two are do completely distinct things. So people talk quite often blur that. Yes, you know. yes. I mean disaster recovery is a bit like a fire extinguisher. You want it to go off right now. Yeah. You don't want it to go off in half an hour. But a fire extinguisher has no moving parts, yet you test it once a year. And, <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a, a complicated yeah. computer system is a lot of moving parts <laughs> and is tested rarely. And interestingly, you talk about um, going to the cloud. We did a survey last year and uh, asking a lot of questions. But one of the questions was, how do you back up your cloud? And 80% of all respondents had no idea or didn't back up their cloud, because it's difficult. And the interesting thing was, we have very little cloud services, but we do have a CRM in the cloud. And when I came up with this question, I asked our marketing department, how do we back up all our CRM data? And the question, the answer was, backup, CRM data. <laughs> so we have to manually do it. And I think this is part of the shadow IT, where it's so easy for the marketing department to just get online, get their credit card, get their things going, and they've got all the functionality they need. They've got it fast, and the whole mo monolith of the IT department is left for dust, and they don't even know they're running these systems. And this is where GDPR is going to be a nightmare because all of a sudden the person in responsible is going to go right IT where's your data and they'll go it's here 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 and it's over there and then you'll find there's HR got their systems on that cloud you've got marketing have probably got 25 systems all over the place and that is all sort of a personal data that needs to be controlled and uh, you know it's a bit like the, the children have sort of taken over the, the elementary school uh, and GDPR is going to cause a lot of a lot of problems for many organisations. It's, it's a very human challenge, isn't it? It's, it's that old saying of you don't know what you have until it's gone. How do you address that? How do you persuade people that this is something they need to take we'll seriously? Take, yeah. It's very difficult. Uh, I, I'm not really an out-and-out -out salesman, but your sales cycles of one to five years is generally the norm because it's a very reluctant sale. It's an insurance policy that you don't need to have. Mm -hmm. And every month you delay, you've saved on a premium until you've timed it poorly. And then as long as you've got, as long as the IT team have got plausible deniability, which is usually uh, an email sort of saying, you said I couldn't spend this this year, then, then there's nothing to lose apart from the, the stakeholders in the organization who rely on the services, yada, yada, yada. Do you, so, find, sorry, do you find that people come to you more after a disaster Generally, happens? yes. Right. However, <laughs> we find that the half-life of uh, how urgent it is uh, is about three months, because then they've forgotten about it. <laughs> it it's quite bizarre uh, how... Then, then, then you've got the maxim that lightning never strikes twice. <laughs> But we find that people who have disasters tend to have more disasters because they're probably the less organized, they've got the worst change control, and they are living on the edge in terms of capability and the minimum amount of cost or investment in their IT, which means it's more prone to some form of failure when Microsoft do their latest upgrade and requires more uh, memory, and they're, they're sitting already on 99.9%. <laughs> So, so I've got to ask this question: What, in, what do you think, in your opinion, is the biggest threat to invoke a disaster recovery situation? At the moment, it is uh, malware. Malware. You think? Yeah. For, in, we, we invoke an awful lot compared yeah. with yeah. people of, uh, apart from the, the, the you know the normal uh, large organisations, the traditional DR providers who never invoke ever, because it has to be on fire for them to invoke. We, have, we invoke, on average, throughout all our base, on average once every 36 months. So someone has some form of disaster. Now, it won't necessarily be a fire, but it will be 
a you know, hardware failure or something like that, and 44% in the last 12 months are, 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 are ransomware. Can you get me out of jail free now? Wow. And wow. generally speaking, it's because everything else that they thought they had, they haven't. But well, what do you do with that situation? I mean, you've got the replicated technology there, yeah. but what, I mean, I'm guessing that a client's uh, network is, has to be linked to your network yeah. for a disaster recovery replication point of view. Yeah. What if it's saturated and crept in their data over there? Or you, you've got to obviously keep the bad well, guys out. Well, there's, there's 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 we have a number of technologies, but certain things there are, we have copies and historical copies. So we can go back, in the case of Zerto, which we use for replication technology, you have a journal which can last up to 30 days within at four second increments. Wow. Providing you've got the bandwidth right, because everyone assumes they've got an ultimate band, yeah. and they haven't for the amount of data that changes. But essentially, you can go back to four seconds before the, the, the encryption of the malware paid off and then start it from there. And what we can do, because everyone thinks, oh, you're a disaster recovery, you've got to have everything, you know, the whole shebang. We can just give you subsets. We can just give you your data back. We can just we can run it remotely, or we can put it on a VMDK on the fastest taxi to wherever you need it, or we can put it on a running uh, VMware platform, running, readdressed for your platform, and then move it to site so you've got a local copy rather than having to go remotely. So there's various options, and every disaster is unique. Okay. Believe me. Everyone goes, how do you how do you fail back? Well. Give me a give me a disaster scenario, and we'll give you an idea of how it's going to work. That's Zombie going to be the apocalypse. Quote of the day. <laughs> Zombie apocalypse. Now, unfortunately, I've no idea what you're talking about. Oh, well, that made my quiz <laughs> even more interesting. Neil has a little quiz that he's been giving to that. everybody. Very uh, nicely. Yeah. You have to choose between your preferred disaster. Right. Zombie apocalypse or robots taking over the world. Romans taking over the world. <laughs> Rodents. Rodents. Uh, that's already been done. Robots. Uh, robots. <laughs> robots. Uh, I don't know. When I'd robots say... take over or zombie apocalypse? Well, ro robots are going to take over the world. So let's just let's just let's just face the future, shall uh, we? You want to go for you the robot, robot question? <laughs> no. Okay. Neil likes zombies. So I love zombies. Biased. I've never <laughs> really one. I've never really done zombies. I'm afraid. <laughs> right. Okay. okay. I'm going to have hard questions now. Ooh. They are quite hard, actually. Yeah, they are quite Which hard. Which one should we do? The last one. Do you make? Come on, Neil, make a decision. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to do the one I did this morning because okay. it's odds on that you're at a stand today. You wouldn't have heard it. I'm I'm on a stand today. Okay. And I've not heard anything. It's so noisy in here. <laughs> Question for you for when one of our star prizes. Yes. Um, <laughs> don't get too excited. Neil. <laughs> I won't. Um, right. People often. Uh, refer to the Internet of Things, inscribed obviously objects, software, sensors, etc., etc. But who actually, who commonly credit, who was credited with coining this phrase, this phrase, IoT? Was it Al Gore? Who? Al Gore. Al Gore. All right. Yes. Bill Gates. Yeah. Neil Catamore. Or Kevin Ashton. I think it's Al Gore. No, but close. <laughs> I think uh, maybe because I mean Kevin Ashton was a really good British entrepreneur. I think he might want to. S Kevin Ashton then. Yeah. Kevin oh, Ashton, okay. it is. You Kevin. can't help them, Neil. That's just cheating. I the whole said idea me. of the quiz is that this the whole, guest has this to is all 21st century. Everyone has to win a prize. I ran a yeah. race. Ian, you failed on the <laughs> trivia, but you actually scored on being a guest today. So, boom. boom. Um, <laughs> Do you know, I think it's actually better not to win because the prizes are so rubbish. I haven't won anything for ages, so I'll be very happy. Um, or banana. Oh, it wasn't no. that one. Right, so it was the robots. No, it, was just, it was the robots. I have no idea what you're going to do with this. Oh, sorry, I'm spitting over your legs, my dear. Sorry. Um, right, uh, Neil Catamel is touching my legs on Sorry, camera. sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's like evil Santa. Uh, I'm not quite is sure it? what this does. Um, it's called a, what is it called? A bright, bright bugs, bugs evolution. evolution. This is going to glow your mind. Um, yeah. Basically, why did we let yeah. Neil pick the prizes? You can even download an app that, that juggles. Anyway, put it that way. I, I'd Enjoy like it. to thank my agent, Enjoy it. my parents, <laughs> and you'll have hours of fun with that. I'm sure with your in your hands. I'm sure I will. Thank you very much. Your spin is just.
Thank you, Ed. It's Thank been you a very pleasure. much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good Take pleasure to meet you. Think disaster recovery, think plan B. Think plan B. That's I like that. Zerto to azure, that's what you need. Zerto to azure. Exactly. Okay. Say it again. Zerto. <laughs> Zerto to azure. Thank you. Yeah, that's right.